This week on our pole barn build, we're in a race against time to finish up the roof structure. We took a big gamble and rented a huge piece of equipment in hopes of finishing the roof system in just one day. Hang around to the end, I'm gonna tally up all the numbers and get a total cost of the build up until this point. So our plan today is to get all these trusses stood up and get them pinned all together, and the crane is gonna lift it up and set it on the roof for us. Sounds easy enough. Let's get to work. Um, that is exactly what the engineer trusses are. So this whole beam needs to be 187 width wise. And before the engineer trusses or the roof systems finally assembled, we need to go through here and brace everything up as well. We have some knee braces we're gonna put in on that 20 foot span. And then we're also gonna do a couple cross braces just to make sure our width is correct. As you can see down there, it's bowed out a little bit. So we might have to get the straps back out and get some two by fours cut the length and see if we can pull this thing square. Cause we wanna do that now before we have the roof up in the air with a crane. After several days exposed to the elements, our top 2x header definitely had a lot of bow to it, but after these pre-cut 2x4s were installed, it squared everything up perfect. We were probably about an inch and a half off max, so I think that solved that issue. And we are close to uh, even or square up top, probably within a quarter inch. So I think we have about a quarter inch of forgiveness on the truss seat plates, so I think we'll be good to go. Now we're going to get these knee braces tied in on our 20 foot spans and keep on trucking. We do have some extra 4x4s by 10s laying around, so we're going to use those for our knee braces, cut them in half, put 45s on each end, and just attach them to the top and bottom header where they lie. I will also take the chainsaw and put a little saddle cut in the telephone poles so it's a little more secure. To secure all the knee braces to the telephone poles, we are using a quarter inch by eight timber screw. Oh, yeah. Woo, look at that, dude. Don't get much better than that. Squirrel, <laughs> there might have been one or two easier ways. <laughs> Let me ladder you up. There you go, try that. Yeah, everything is tied in and square as it's going to get up top for this roof. Now we got to assemble these trusses. Let me show you how I'm going to lay these out so it'll be the easiest way I think we're going to assemble them. Now my original plan was to build heavy timber trusses, but after getting a quote from a local yard to build engineered trusses, I just couldn't justify it for the budget. So since we're using the telephone poles, it didn't fall exactly on five foot centers for the trusses like I had planned. We're off a couple inches, not much. So I'm gonna lay out all of these two by fours, the length of the building, and I have the measurements of exactly where the engineered trusses are gonna sit. I'm gonna transfer those measurements to the two by fours the full length and then that way these will be uh, four of our uh, purlins for the top. So we'll start standing these triangle trusses up, lay these purlins right up top. The marks on our purlins will tell us exactly where the truss goes and we'll start frame nailing those together. Probably got to do it. 
Good. Good. Turned out pretty good. Now we're gonna run the rest of these purlins, stack them down here, get them nailed in, run some more supports to the center, and this thing will be ready to lift. Now uh, a little less, a little less, All right there. Good? All right, Nick, you ready for the crane? Ready. We ready. And so we got the crane showing up today. Uh, we're just buttoning up a few things on the truss system. We're tying in uh, a couple scabs. And then we're going to run two full length two by fours right through the center and nail it to the side of the top vertical cord on the trusses. And hopefully that will be the lifting point for the crane. So we got all the scabs cut. We're going to get those tossed on there and then we'll start running the center cords for the lifting points yeah these two by fours man they're super nice i'm gonna use these for my girts so these guys will nail the scabs just to this side of the roof right and then that way if the crane says he can lift the whole section we'll come back in and just nail them together if not he can lift this section then when it goes back on it, it'll just sit right on top of the scabs So these are the very ends we're scabbing on and then we're going to put our flying purlin or flying rafter hanging out over here. I'm going to overhang it about 20 inches. That way when I go to do the siding, it'll give me some options to do like a decorative kind of nose out up top uh, for my fascia. We have a couple more of these to go and the end will be completely tied in. Then we'll start with our, our rigging boards. So my goal for the gable ends is to finish it with a curved gable. So we're going to use a one by four just to kind of mock the radius of it. And that way we can mark our flying purlins where they need to go and go ahead and pre-cut those before we put it in the air. Can you tell at all? I mean, that's your mark there. like butter. Boom! Roof system is done, ready to go. We broke it close to the center right here. You can see we left all these scabs. We didn't tie these in. When the crane operator shows up, hopefully he'll let us know if he can pick this thing up in one piece or if he wants to do it in two. So if it's one, we'll scab it back together real quick and we'll go up. If it's two, it's ready to go now. But we're gonna hop up top. Um, I wanna show you what kind of fasteners I've been using on most of this, uh, these beams and stuff, and we do have to uh, tighten these upper beams up a little bit because the two buys kind of opened up just enough to where it added about a half inch of measurement or width to our span. So we gotta fix that and get that tightened up a little bit. Ooh. 
So now look at. Oh <clears throat> lord. Just after I got up here, the crane is here. But this is the beam I'm talking about. It's opened up a little bit. So we're gonna take some of these uh, ledger lock bolts. Let me see that little thing. We're gonna take a few of these, two inches, and squeeze it together and run down. Just maybe about six on each side. All right, let's go get this crane. We're about to do this thing, fingers crossed. He says he can back up to it, no problem, and reach the where our roof system is on the ground and lift it right up on the top. So pretty exciting and a little nervous same time. So what do you think, one, one piece or two? Ah. He said it won't take but a minute. This is some high tech stuff right here. Yeah, boy. The crane operator said, let's take it in two pieces. It'll be easier, more maneuverable. So we are running the front half first. This is gonna go on the front. We got two lines on it. Uh, about a, a second truss in on each side and we're about to lift it. We got one tag line tied up. See how she does. Is it free? All right, he can go down now. Got it. So the crane operator showed up with all the rigging that we needed. He handed us two big metal cable loops to loop around the truss system back up to the big hook on his crane. And then we added a tag line to control the swinging from the ground. And after the second back roof section was rigged up, we were ready to lift it in place. And this all took span in about 30 minutes. So this happened very quickly. What's it hitting? Hold it off this back post right here and these will line up. Once we set it down, then we'll slide it in that way.
that good? I'm about a quarter inch over. Quarter to a half, by quarter over. All right. I think we're good. If you're flush, I'm good. All right, you ready? That could not have went any smoother. So right here, you can see this is the section of the two pieces, and we got the scabs going from the underside. So now we just gotta hop up here. Shoot a couple nails in these scabs and tie the two by fours back together, and uh, it'll be it'll be done. It's set down really good, really nice. Huh? So how'd you get up there, big guy? Oh, just uh, squirrel stuff, I reckon. Just squirreling around. Yeah. That was smooth, dude. Yeah. Real, real smooth. Quick, smooth. No hiccups at all. Let me get on here so I'm definitely glad. Think you can do that? When I come down, we'll just, then we can just pull the hose through. Hey, I didn't notice this. Yesterday the roof system went on perfectly. It went on in two pieces that worked out great because there was about a half inch gap in the middle section. So once we bolted the front on, then we bolted the back on, we had about a half inch play in the middle and the scabs made that difference up perfectly. Now our front six bys are still too long. They're sticking above the truss system. So we're gonna go up there, cut those to length, and then I'll make sure we tie those in with a bunch of these six inch lag screws. After I get those tied in, we'll wrap up this video and I'll give you a total cost of what I have in this build up to this point. As always, thank you guys for watching and the total cost up to this point on this build is $7,950 and below will be a little better of a detailed breakdown list. We'll see you next week for another episode of our pole barn build.